the 1980s and 1990s are a great time for the software business because it's an extremely profitable business if you have a popular product, right? Your cost of producing an extra CD of software is very, very low compared to the, the price that you can attach to that software. But I think the industry is moving away from that and, and that really won't be a sustainable business model in the future. Mark Shuttleworth is South Africa's best known IT multi-millionaire and he says he owes it all to hard work and open source software. In 1999, he made headlines when he sold his company, Thought Consulting, to American competitor Verisign for $575 million. Thought didn't sell software. The price paid for the company was due to their customer base and market share. We used software. We built all of that operation using open source software. The database that we used to track all of our transactions was open source. The web server that we were using was open source. Um, a lot of the tools to do the cryptography were initially open source tools that, that, that are available, were available then and are still available today. Um, it wasn't a software business. And I think that's really a, a sign of where the, the IT industry is headed. Far more of the industry is going to be focused around services than around software licensing. It doesn't matter how good the operating system is, sooner or later you're going to need somebody to come along and modify it for you or expand it or install new software or make it better, add new users. Alan McKinnon's company, AfriBiz, has two arms. One part of the business offers support for people running open source software and networks. The other part is in training people to maintain systems. You must remember, traditionally with, with IT, the only guy that made money out of Microsoft product was Microsoft. They, they sold their product. Everybody else made money from uh, supporting it, or giving training in it, or writing new software for it. Now we've set our business up, it runs just like any other normal business. A student contacts us, he signs up to do a course, there's a fee, he pays, we train him. So we're no different from any other training institute. There's one big difference, we only train on open source software. Open source software is freely available, which means that startup costs are much lower. For Mark, who started his business in his garage, it was indispensable. I was a student at the time. I had no money. I was, I was doing this to help pay for university. Um, and so I, I certainly couldn't have afforded to build all of this on proprietary software. That's the first thing. The second thing was that the proprietary software that was available just didn't have the features. Open source software tends to be richer in terms of what you can do with it um, and easier to use in terms of plugging different pieces together to create something. So what I found was that um, using open source software I was able to set up servers on the other side of the world, I was able to um, build all of the infrastructure you know, using database software that was both free of charge and allowed me to plug deeply into it because the source code was all free. Um, was able to present all of this through the web at very low cost because the web server software was all freely available and the, the programming languages that I used to create all of these tools, those were also freely available. So there was a huge resource out there that I could tap into to start building this business from scratch. The business opportunities presented by the open source revolution have been picked up on by the giants of IT like IBM, Sun and HP. HP is developing new products which are developed, uh, which are developed specifically for emerging markets and those all use open source very heavily because it's the only way that they can both price them and compete from a uh, functionality point of view in these emerging markets. An example is HP's 441, which allows four people to share the resources of one computer. It is built in the flexibility and power of the open source operating system Linux. Once the big names start to support the, the whole open source way of doing things, your IBMs and HPs, then others will follow suit. There are many small organizations who are finding themselves sustainable. Um, uh, an example is MySQL, which is a database started as an open source database, became so popular, in fact it's now the most popular database behind websites, um, that they generate enough revenue out of consulting and services associated with this free software to keep their business